the snow is Eric Yaverbaum, who is president of Erico. Erico. Right Erico. I'm sorry, Eric. That's okay. Should have checked with that uh, before. Uh, I, I should have done a better job of naming the Erico company. Communications and co-founder of ReadToVote.org. Good to see you, Eric. Uh, nice to be Thanks here. Thanks very much for being here. And Carrie Pickett is a staff writer for the Washington Times, and she joins us from our Washington Bureau. Nice to see you, Carrie. I, I usually only see you on uh, Twitter. That's how I, uh, I, I get my updates from you. Well, I also read, read your work in the Washington Times as well, but you pop up on my Twitter screen multiple times during the day. It's nice to talk to you live. How are you today? Well, very well, and I'm, I'm glad to see that you're still following me on Twitter. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk about, uh, you know, we, we just had the report from Los Angeles. There's certainly a lot of things that we can discuss today, and we will. But since we just heard from Anita about health care and since this judge's decision uh, just came down uh, yesterday out of Florida, uh, it seems, Carrie, like this is a, a battle that is headed all the way to the Supreme Court. Um, wh how does all of this play out, do you think, the health care law and whether or not it's constitutional? Well, I think that one of the things that the Obama administration is obviously at this point doing is obviously scrambling all over the White House at this point. Remember, during the State of the Union, the uh, thing that Obama said was, you know, let's not um, continue debating about this, let's just move on, and now he has it right in his lap, and uh, it's, it's simply going to be not just debated over on Capitol Hill, but it's also going to be fought in the courts, and uh, Frankly, it's going to be simply part of the 2012 campaign, and uh, as well as during the um, the congressional elections as well. Mm -hmm. Eric, the president has said that he is willing to talk about the bill, and that if anybody has any ideas on ways to improve it, he's open to suggestions. But he is not willing to start this debate over health care reform uh, from scratch. He's no. not willing to do that, uh, and he floated an idea that I guess was uh, shot down almost as quickly as it was, it was floated up, uh, which is the idea of tort reform. He talked about that in the State of the Union address uh, last week. Uh, we haven't really heard that being mentioned, and yet that was one of the of sort of the clarion calls of Republicans. Well, how can we talk about health care reform without talking about tort reform? The president raised it. Why isn't that being discussed more? Well, it should be. But here's, I mean, it, if you look at the, first of all, health care, this is one-sixth of our economy. So there's a, there is a connection between how we're doing economically, which everybody's worried about, and what's going on in health care. Um, second is, is that the whole, this notion of a, a complete repeal it's, it, is ridiculous. Yes, it will go, as everybody's saying, to the Supreme Court, but... O over the personal mandate, not the entire health care bill. I, I hope, I think it's a very important conversation. I think it's a very important discussion. I think it's an opportunity for the right and the left, for everybody to get together and come up with a better answer. But I hope we, this doesn't drag on forever. We have so many very important issues to discuss. But can we reform health care, uh, Carrie, and I want you to weigh in on this too. And let me start with you, Carrie. Can we reform health care without the personal mandate? How else do we pay for the, for, to insure all of these non-insured right now? if we don't have some kind of uh, a requirement that everybody buy into the system. But you see, that's just the whole problem, is, is that in order to actually pay for the whole thing, and frankly, I don't even think it, it even can be paid for it, uh, but is that the, the whole personal mandate was simply the whole linchpin for it, for, for it to be paid for. And, and, and frankly, the uh, CBO numbers simply aren't even uh, coming out correctly because you, it, it was simply p put in there with the simply best of circumstances. For example, if the stock market doesn't crash, if, if the sky is blue every single day and we don't have these uh, horrible, d disastrous weather conditions, et, et cetera, et cetera. So frankly, I think right now what we're seeing is everything sort of you know coming to pass into finding out just how horrible this uh, this uh, health care law is we saw Kathleen Sebelius really defending the law up on Capitol Hill recently Secretary but, uh, of Health and Human Services that that is correct and um, we saw for, for example Senator Burr actually ask her uh, he said hey you know this um, medical devices for example you know would you be for repealing the, the, the attacks on uh, medical devices she's like she said no <laughs> absolutely not and now that's that's really funny because I thought that this health care law had absolutely uh, no taxes on uh, on really anything. We wouldn't see any of our taxes go up. Well, actually, you know that that was really telling because Kathleen Sebelius herself said no. I I, I don't believe in repealing mm -hmm. any taxes on those health care devices, or, or, or rather those those uh, those uh, medical devices. Eric, there are some who are suggesting maybe an opt out uh, for the health care law that that might be a compromise so that people who 
for whatever reason, don't want to buy into the system, don't want to have health insurance, uh, or don't want to be told that they have to have health insurance, well, uh, could opt out. Well, I mean, it, uh, it's viable. There, there, some things, we're going to have to bring something to the table uh, in, in that debate. Uh, we're going to have to give a little bit on, on that issue. I think it's a very, that's an insurmountable, that's the one, that's the crushing one to this entire health care belt. But, but, but the Carrie's point, she's absolutely right, is we can't afford this anyway. The whole country isn't getting that part. Is We are seriously broke getting broker and spending more. Now, I, I, I actually uh, have a, a lot of vested personal interest in a, a, a lot that's in that health care bill, but I think it's important that the country as a whole realizes that every penny we're spending now, we don't have. So if you're cool with putting money on your personal credit card, you'll be very cool with absolutely everything we're doing right now. If you're not, you should take a close look at it. Carrie, you want to put a ribbon on this health care uh, discussion and then we'll move on, maybe talk mm -hmm. about Egypt? You know, what it, what it comes down to is this. The economy is still in shambles, and, and frankly, the whole timing on, on this health care bill really just wasn't on, on people's minds when, when, uh, when, when uh, Obama came to office. And, uh, and for them to uh, start demanding people to uh, start uh, looking at their health care rates and the premiums to uh, go up was, uh, was simply just bad timing.